the sheep wagons. See, see they would start out and then they'd be headed down the, the trails and back roads and then they get to a certain point and set up camp and then the sheep would graze. And they'd leave their camp there for a couple days or until it's grazed out. Then they'd hook on a, a tractor or a truck or even a team of horses and then proceed down a few more miles and then just keep working the sheep around. The sheep wagons are just affiliated with the sheep but they really had much more uses than just that. I mean they were pe poor people's homes for a long time. People want to recapture that old style. This wagon here we actually built it to look really old. It's only four years old and we use old wagon parts in it that came off an old original wagon, like the wood on the front. The running gear is an old running gear, an antique. Almost eight years ago, my sister wanted a wagon for her place in Wyoming. She uses a little guest house. Yeah, as a guest house. The first wagon, it took us about a year to do. And then all of a sudden, somebody's seen it, somebody's seen it. And then about after three years, it just turned into a business. The table, it's, we did it so that it could pull all the way out and you could actually set two people on each side. And the thing about it is, it's, it doesn't have to have any legs or anything. It will hold. Yeah, no legs to get in the way here. Yeah, yeah. And it holds. Yeah, it'll hold. Yeah, I put wedges in back, so as you pull it out, it tightens up. Can't pull it out all the way. When you push it back, it locks. In our drawers, you got to lift them. So if people are traveling, you don't want everything to open. It'll have to stay shut. Yeah. Really simple, but functional. Now, we had one guy that bought one of these, and he was a writer. And he wanted one because he used to be on a boat, a small sailboat. And he said to him, it was very reminiscent of the sailboat, the very compact space. If Kim sets up and then you lift it up, you do have a porta potty. Oh my god. That's a surprise. Wow. It's a regular yes, size. Yeah. 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 And it's all electronic, has a little battery in it, so you push buttons and yeah. so it's a is it a boat? Um, it, it's actually self-contained. Yeah, it's made for RVs. RVs. Yeah, okay. any kind of RV. And you take the bottom out probably. Yeah. Uh, you go out on the outside we'll show you where you dump okay, it. Great. And then where I'm sitting here, this one opens here, and then you just have your ice chest if you want. So this is the refrigerator. Right. Yep. And all of our wagons are different. We actually put in high-end mattresses. This is a memory foam mattress. Now with this one, it's our wagon, but because of the grandkids, we made it so that they can go underneath Little kids love it under there. Uh, do they ever sleep down there? Oh yeah, kids. Yeah, in fact, we're building a wagon right now for a client. He's got two little kids. They are gonna sleep up here and the little kids are gonna sleep down, down under the bed. Wow. But we do this cabinet with any kind of configuration. We've done it with all drawers and lots of drawers. I mean, just whatever people can imagine we can do in the front here. Mm -hmm. You can't see it, but on each end of the bed there is electric and there's a plug-in, so there's three 110 outlets. Yeah, so you can plug into like an RV. Right underneath. The, yeah. And what we do is we hide them, but there are three electric plug-ins. Are they actually working lanterns? Well, these are all antique lanterns. If you put oil in them, they would work. But Now, there okay. are occasions where somebody will want a working lantern, but they'll want that electrified, and we do that. Okay. Or we do battery-powered ones or whatever they want. So. Yeah. All of our wagons are totally different. We have built in almost eight years, 50 wagons. Wow, so they're very popular. That's a lot of wagons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And this is an original sheep herder stove. Yeah, this is my granddad's from, I believe, 20s or 30s. Yeah, this is the firebox. Okay, so the firebox. Then you got your ash pan here. Hmm. And this is a little oven. And all the old timers, the thing was cornbread. Cornbread all the time, <laughs> cornbread and beans. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. in the day, if you ever seen an old sheep wagon, anybody, stranger stopped by and 
talk to the sheep herder, come on and have cornbread and beans. You just had to. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody you talk to remembers going in, out in the desert and stopping by a wagon, and you're always invited in. My granddad, the little sign that says, have you yet? That was his, any stranger come by, whether it be a salesman, somebody looking for directions, they knock on the door, first thing out of his mouth would be, have you yet yet? And they never left without getting a feed. So it's just cupboards. I mean, that's yeah. Whole, that's what you need for a kitchen, I guess. Right. right. More. Yeah. They were pretty simple in the day. Yeah. Coffee, yeah. sugar, cornbread material. <laughs> In the winter time, I had a client come in from Colorado and it was snowing. We lit up our stove and within 20 minutes we had it to 75 in here and everybody was in t-shirts. And then yeah, you walked. We, we sat here and ate our lunch and watched the snow fly. And we watched the snow and of course they bought a wagon, but. <laughs> <laughs> On this side here is his mother's father and that's his sheep and his ranch. And our cousins today they're still doing sheep in Hagerman Valley. Would they, would they, would they need something like this now? Uh, well, yeah, they, they do use the yeah. wagons. We still build what we call working wagons. They don't just use them as guest houses. And the steps, we have our own pin system so these steps can take off. So it's easier, like people, when their wagon is being taken a step away. And then when we do horse-drawn, we make two sets of steps because the horse-drawn would be lighter, smaller, because they don't want to carry something so heavy with them. We just sent two to California to a sheep rancher and they're working wagons. He's using them on his sheep ranch. And he said by the end of the summer, he will have pulled these wagons about 150 miles. This is a, a side box. And this is all made out of parts from an old wagon, this material here. And then here is a table. And then of course, then you just got your old stove. This is our, our granddad's Dutch oven. Dutch oven that he actually used. And that was because my dad had it and he gave it to us. So. And then if you come back here, this is what, is called a drop down tailgate and what it is is you drop it down and again people do put their stuff in camp you know cook and stuff but this opens up and then this goes under the bed so you got to get to that under the bed if you need to and again this is made out of uh, old wood from an old wagon with this window he has made it so that it actually well, totally open. And then if you come around here, of course, they would carry water on. We have done, like for working wagons, there is five gallon water barrels and they do have spouts, so they still use them today. But this one we just have for looks. This is here where we were talking about, this gives you access to your porta potty from the outside. Oh. You just pull it out. Okay. And it's just, it's just an RV. Has a thing it breaks apart so you can go. Yeah, and you have a double, and you just you know, chemical. That's uh, just like you use in an RV uh, boat, and it's self-contained. And there's people who live in the colder country, uh, but if you go to the RV place, you can get so it doesn't freeze. Oh, yeah, the little wa is this the wash pan? Yeah, and that's what they used to do. You just. <laughs> It's enamelware, they call it, uh -huh. and that's what they... No, no plastic in there, mm -hmm. And my husband, uh, Kim makes all of this, all of these hardware, all of this, really? he makes, uh, yeah, because you can't buy it, so he makes all of these, all this handles, he takes metal and he bends it and forges it, and wow. so he makes all the hardware. we have several that cattle ranchers are using them. They like the sense of history to go with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there was a time there they decided to go to travel trailers, but after about a year they decided travel trailers didn't work, so then they went back to the old sheep wagons. Do you have any idea why the, the travel trailers didn't work? Is there something? I, I think functional? the construction of them just didn't hold up. Mm -hmm. huh. Didn't hold up yeah, with it. Yeah, too, too many foo-foos and too many things to come apart and just didn't really hold up. And 
just over the really bumpy roads, mm-hmm. and like they're, they're, you know, those, a lot of the trailer trailers are plastics. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, plastic and real thin plywood. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And this stuff is, what are you building out of? The main part of the construction is two by six, tongue and groove, and it's all glued and screwed together. So it's good for travel. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. The bows here, they're steam bent, and they're made out of ash. Your covered wagons way back when had, you know, the curved tops. They would roll the canvas up at different places or even take the canvas off. You know, a flat roof would be probably not the most handy in a lot of situations. It also makes it very lightweight, really. A whole complete box without a running gear is a thousand pounds. So by the time you add the running gear, this one probably weighs about 1,600 pounds total. So you, you get a lot of good structure, plus you get the lightweight. This running gear here, we're restoring it. It is actually going to Jackson Hole, and she is trying to capture her family's wagon. That's why she wanted a real old running gear. Where'd you get it? This one we got from a rancher, because this is gonna be used as a guest house. But if they're doing a working wagon, we gotta get new because it has to have brakes and all kinds of stuff. Come on into the shop. And and this is the wagon box that we're working on. And this is ash, and ash is very, very hardwood. Real, real hardwood. Hardwood bends easier when it's steamed than a softwood. Softwood won't work. Uh-huh. They're gonna be in long straight sticks, and then they'll stick them in a, a, a very a, a long tube with, with steam in it. And then after a certain period of time, they're gonna take these out and then they'll put them on a mold. And you have to do it really, really quick. A couple artistic liberties that we took. An original sheep wagon is only six foot long, barely six foot tall, and 11 foot three inches long. And these so, ones. So it's what we did because see, we put a queen size mattress in, which is a really big, and, and they only had what was it, single mattress? Yes, yeah, single. So what we do, we stretch it to seven foot wide to accommodate the mattress, and we go a little over six foot so that people aren't having to lean over. And that way, when you lay down on the bed, you can actually lay down. So it still has the, the real close look at essence of the original ones, but that's mm-hmm. the only artistic liberties we've really taken is just make them a little bit bigger. And then what we do with this, this T and G, we buy it, we stack it, and we let it cure for three months before we use it. So, and that's what it looks like before we stain it or anything. And the floor is the last mm-hmm. thing I do. Your thing with this wagon here, it's going to have a canvas liner It'll look like a wagon and it's an original canvas liner. Then we'll insulate it and then we're going to put aluminum on top of that and then we'll put the high-tech canvas on top of that and tie it. The reason is, is these people live in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. The weather is very cold. Oh, so this is the insulation. Yeah. It's rated as an R13. So they can be really insulated. They're really insulated. And what you see here, it's taken us a month to get to this part. So as you can see, our shop is very small. And the intention was we were in construction before this just became a business. We never knew we were gonna be building wagons in here. We thought we were just working. And it, it, people don't realize it's a process. It's all hand done. I mean, we can't build them in a month. I mean, in fact, we about killed ourselves one time trying to get one done in six weeks. Kim and I have been married in January 40 years, and we've been in construction for 38 years. I mean, so, I mean, so we're always building stuff. Well, our backyard is, is different. <laughs> All of our little buildings and stuff that we have back here, we built. We just put our storage in. This is what we call uh, Kim Build. It's our wagon and wheels, and that actually holds different parts of wagons, stoves and different parts. This is a chuck wagon that Kim has built, and this is five different pieces of wagons. <laughs> we, he used all kinds of wagon parts to make because I wanted a chuck wagon. This what is, is a chuck wagon? A chuck wagon is what used to follow the wagons and were the cook, and the cook lived in it and all the food. This here 
drops down and all their flour and everything is in the box. A mobile kitchen, and that's what a chuck wagon was. And then this, I sell parts and this is our mercantile store. This is the stuff that you've seen in the wagon. This is all original antiques that I have picked up. And there's, there's different people who want things for their wagons. And so I bring them in and they'll pick out what they want to put in their wagon. These are original old Pendleton blankets. This is a new Pendleton. Pendleton blankets, that's what they use, their wool. And then these are just, they're all enamel wear. Enamel wear. Okay. Yeah. And they're not re replicas, they're old. They're all original enamel wear. Yeah, and this is actually off of my grandmother's ranch, and this was actually a chicken feeder. She fed her chickens with it, but I put eggs in it. And a lot of my stuff is family. And this bench you have here, that yeah. was at my grandma's ranch. So that bench is 50 years old. This is off of when they used to have old stoves. It was a real way of life. Yeah. And let's see what year is this? March 23, 1933. So they're showing people who are living them. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was a wagon community. And so they all must have been sheep herders or some connection to have. Uh, no, that was just their way of living. So wagon, as we'd have a trailer park community. Yep. Now. Yep. And it was all wagons. You'll hear stories of some of the older people that this was basically their first house after they got married. What was an old sheep wagon? You'll hear it a lot of times. So wh why do they call it a sheep wagon? Because there were shepherders, they, they would have lots of sheep. And this is a sheep. stove to cook. Whole families would live in here? Well, we restored three years ago, we had three sisters and their parents' old wagon, they wanted us to restore it. And they lived in it for seven years. There was three girls, a mom family. and a dad, and that was their home. And in fact, she said, our mother one year said, I'm going to have a Christmas tree. And she put the tree on the bed and everybody slept outside. So Kim loves building sheep wagons. Kim's grandfather, the people we build for have so much passion what they want their wagon for. This is a working sheep wagon. So, and see, this is their water. And what they did is, he was telling you about the wool blankets. That's what's insulating inside of this. This wagon is about 100 years old. And this is what they call a commissary wagon. And this is a wagon that we have. This gal here has bought six of our wagons. She has apprentices that work for her. And four of them live in the wagons full time. Two of them, they rent out. Yeah. This is my cousin's wagon that's coming down the summit, and he still uses this today. The sheep herder, he didn't just hang out in the wagon. His job was keep track of the sheep, make sure all the sheep were doing well, plus to keep all the, the critters that wanted to eat sheep out of the way. I mean, mm -hmm. he had a lot to do. Yeah. It'd take a special person to be able, first of all, to want to live in the wilderness and, you know, the isolation and... Well, yeah. maybe that's also attractive in some ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To it, me, it would be. Just the quiet. I'm not necessarily a people person. I, I'm content with just working on my shop and not seeing a person. <laughs> and that's what we love about building the wagons. We stay small. We could get big, but we stay small because it's it's a piece of art to us. Everything is individually hand built. We're not, we're not going to take any part of this and fit it in another one. Each one is specifically for this wagon. All of our materials, like we got our gal that does our canvas, she's been doing it now for eight years and she's local and she's just very small. And we've got a lady down the road that custom builds those windows for us. And the gentleman that does our bows, he's from Montana. He's very small, just him by himself and he's been doing our bows for eight years so we try to keep local materials here's yeah. our granddad's 
Oh, Union cards. Mm. See, look at... Chief for, Shears Union of North America, number one. Yeah, and from 1931 to 1945. This wagon is dedicated to our grandfathers. And everybody has their idea of what they remember their granddad's wagon or their dad's wagon was. Our granddad Bader, when he sheared sheep, he used the old sheep shears here. He wasn't electric. And we've had people send us pictures and we'll build to match what their yeah, idea is. It's really fun when people send us pictures and they say, can you duplicate these colors or can you create this essence of it, if you will. So. That's when we know when we hit the mark, when somebody says, wow, how old is it or how long did it take you to restore it? And it's like, yeah, we got her.